you can see the pal I put in the palisade right here. Okay. The second uh, tapestry recounts the siege of Vasilla, which lasted three days from August 20th to August 24th. Due to adverse stormy weather, the Portuguese were unable to land but a few horses and only two pieces of artillery. The composition illustrates the immense wooden palisade. The town of Vasilla is sandwiched between this fence and the coastal waters, where the carracks stand sentinel with their tall masts and multitudinous crow's nests. The curving palisade encases a formidable number of armed soldiers. The fence displays red crosses of the chivalric order of Christ and the water wheel emblem of Alfonso V. The heraldic standard devised under King Juan I also hangs in the palisade. The fleur-de-lis green cross of Avis appears as leafy points on the green cordure, which illustrates 12 Moorish castles taken in the Christian reconquest of Portugal. The five blue saltires contain 11 silver bezants denoting defeated Islamic adversaries. Used for about a century, this standard in 1495 was radically restyled by Manuel I, the nephew of Alfonso V. Artillery is positioned behind protective sections of wood in preparation for an attack against the walls of Asilla. The town really did not stand a chance, as the governor of Asilla, Muhammad el Saik, was in Fez helping the Sultan quell a rebellion and civil war. Royal portraits in this tapestry were designed to be particularly heroic. On the left, side and actually occupying the traditional place of importance is Prince Juan II who extends his arm with an open hand. The reason for this ubiquitous gesture is apparent when looking at his father on the opposite side. King Alfonso V holds a baston de commando or baton of command which he is in the act of transferring to his son. By the side of Prince Juan is his camarero Moor or chamberman. Juan de Silva, as well as his personal bodyguard, Rui de Mella de Cunha, who had traveled and served as standard bearer for Prince Enrique in the 1437 Tangier expedition. Each royal mount is depicted in barding, full body armor for horses, while Chaffron and Krenix respectively shield the head and the neck of a beast. The carpacins encasing their bodies were made of hardened leather, queer bouillie and overlapping iron plates. The protective carpacins are covered with magnificent fabric. Prince Juan's mount displays purple velvet, while King Alfonso V's horse has cloth of crimson and gold adorned with pomegranates. The third tapestry illustrates the assault of Arcella on August 24, 1471. When the Portuguese troops began to destroy the walls of the town at dawn, the warden hoisted a white flag of surrender and sent an emissary to Don Alvaro de Castro, the third Count of Monsanto, whose father Fernando had fought at Suta in 1415 and also at Tangier in 1437. According to Damien de Goish in his 1567 Chronicle of Prince Juan, the Lusitanian troops began an attack without a signal. King Alfonso V and his son requested their helmets and immediately jumped into the fray. Wooden ladders were used to scale the walls. Apparently there were two points of attack, the Alcathar or castle keep and the mosque. The Alcathar was to the left of the 16th century Portuguese tower shown in the photograph and in the Braun Hogenberg view of Arcilla. The town mosque was replaced by a church, perhaps the tall tower within the town proper. Two of Portugal's most valiant knights lost their lives at each vanguard. Juan Cotino, the third count of Marialva, fell at the mosque, while Alvaro de Castro, the first count of Montesanto, died protecting his king at the main gate of the Alcazar. The combat was fierce, but Portugal took the town. 2,000 inhabitants were killed and 5,000 taken captive. In the aftermath of the victory, Prince Joao was knighted at the site of the mosque, hastily consecrated to the Virgin of the Conception, and before the body of Juan Coutinho, the Count of Marialva. Don Enrique de Menenses, his father Duarte, had died in the unsuccessful 
1464 expedition to Tangier was a port appointed warden of Asilla. Looking at the assault, there is an impressive clash of arms, a truly complex battleground of figures. Here Prince Zhuang is shown holding the baton of command, while on the opposite side, King Alfonso V wields the sword as a latter-day King Arthur with Excalibur. Standing in front of the monarch is the standard bearer, Duarte de Almeida, with the royal standard a knight who in March of 1476 will lose both hands in battle against Spain and whose white armor is extant in the chapel of San Eugenio in the Cathedral of Toledo and also displayed here. The Moroccans are portrayed as formidable adversaries with their Ardarga shields and curving swords. While there's little bloodshed, the prowess of the Portuguese knights certainly is exhibited. As paladins on spirited horses, it's easy to parallel the equestrian figures of King Alfonso and Prince Juan with the holy knights of Suta in Jan van Eyck's altarpiece. In fact, King, uh, Prince Juan's paternal grandfather, King Duarte, in 1434, wrote the only practical handbook of equestrian techniques for the medieval knight in the vernacular. It's called the Book of Training and Riding in All Kinds of Saddles. Now, Muhammad el Saik, Lord of Asilla, received word in Fez that his stronghold had fallen to Portuguese troops, and he immediately returned to negotiate peace. Ultimately, he was required to recognize the uh, uh, sovereignty of King Alfonso V in Ceuta, Qasar el Sakir, Asilla, and Tangier. He also was required to relinquish the bones of the deceased Santo Fernando, who had died at Fez in 1443. The fourth and final tapestry concerns the taking of Tangier on August 29, 1471. The king and prince are absent in this panel, as there was no need for an assault upon Tangier. Having heard of the rout at Asilla, the Tangerines decided to flee the city. The braun hogenberg view provides an idea of the topography of Tangier and points of Portuguese invasion and flight of the town's inhabitants. Because taking the town was deemed to be a relatively easy affair, in lieu of the royals, Dom Juan, Marquis of Montemar and second son of Fernando I, the second Duke of Braganza, led his troops to check on reports of the Tangerine withdrawal and take charge of the citadel. Observe how many more horses are illustrated in this tapestry and take note of the vibrant velvet and gold bards accorded the primary mount belonging to the Braganza aristocratic house. Portuguese infantrymen rush through the main gate of Tangier. They walk upon the milliflory vegetation which is so characteristic of tapestries woven in Tournai. Despite the apparent overlaying filter of Flemish decoration, Growing near the walls of Tangier are indigenous pomegranate bushes and orange trees, plants which also flourish in Portugal's Algarve. The lone infantryman hoisting the Portuguese office banner truly accents the quietude of a defeated Moroccan stronghold. Note the stylized representation of the water strong current moving to the right along the coast. The subtle cadence of directional line leads the viewer's eye inexorably towards the fleeing townspeople. On the far right, the inhabitants of Tangier poignantly desert their homes. They depart with great dignity. Prominently walking in the foreground plain is a mother with her three children, an expressive evocation of the traditional representations of charity in Western culture. By contrast with the suggested noise of diverse martial activities in the other Pastrana panels, the center section of this tapestry conjures empty, empty streets and the sounds of silence. In view of their important historical content, the Pastrana tapestries likely were destined for a great hall in Lisbon's primary royal residence, the Castle St. George, which until the Lisbon earthquake of 1755 loomed high over the city's cathedral and the main commercial quay on the Tagus estuary. The six Pastrana tapestries had to have been woven from cartoons drawn by an artist having a thorough knowledge of heraldry 
inclusive of specific fabric design selected to cover brigantine armor and horse baldings actually used in the North African expeditions. There is no northern specialist of multi-figured compositions which feature as much armor and as many armorials as found in the Pastrana panels. Stylistic divergences between the two unrestored Lagos panels and the restored four tapestries may be attributed by the passage of time between the events, about 14 years. However, the retirement of a master designer also could explain aesthetic differences. Usually the mark designating a weaver's workshop, such as the one op uh, operated by Pasquet Grenier in Tournai, would be placed within the outside border of the tapestry. The Lagos panel of the ceremony of the kissing of the hands contains what could be identified as a signature monogram. I believe the cordelite contains the initials of two Portuguese artists patronized by King Alfonso V. One of them was Juan Inés, whose name in court documents is alternatively spelt with a cap initial A. Juan Inés had served the crown for 70 years as Master of Works in Lisbon until his retirement in April of 1471. He was succeeded in the prestigious appointment by Nuno Gonçalves, who was first recorded as a court artist in 1450. A compelling reason for assigning the lost cartoons for the past, uh, Pastrana tapestries to Juan Inej and Nuno Gonsalves is the evidence provided by a documented project of their collaboration, an altarpiece dedicated to the martyr St. Vincent of Saragossa. The St. Vincent altarpiece was commissioned about 1471 by King Alfonso V for the most important reliquary chapel of the Cathedral of Lisbon. The polyptych with a formidable number of 60 portraits reveals an 